Formula One, the pinnacle of motorsports. Simply making it to the top and representing your country is a huge achievement in itself. To win a Grand Prix with the pride of the national anthem and the flag waving above your head is one of the best moments in a driver's career. But to do it at your home race, in front of your home fans, is something very special. And some of the greatest drivers of all time have managed to accomplish this incredible feat on multiple occasions. During Alain Prost's illustrious career, he became a six-time winner of the French Grand Prix, breaking the record for the most wins at a home race in the history of the sports. Jim Clark previously held a record of five wins at the British Grand Prix, before Lewis Hamilton came along and broke both records in 2020, with seven wins at the same event. But easily, the most special race to win behind your home one is around the streets of Monaco, the most prestigious, glamorous, and historic Grand Prix on the calendar. Now, can you imagine how amazing a story it would be if a Monegasque won in the Principality? The man who came closest to doing so was Louis Chiron back in 1950, where he finished third in his Maserati. However, since then, there hasn't been any hope of someone emulating a similar feat, or even better, standing on the top step of the podium. Until now. Charles Leclerc, a driver who many consider to be a generational talent, is one of the most exciting young prospects in recent history. In just his second season, he was promoted to the famous Italian team and outperformed a four-time world champion in Sebastian Vettel. He also secured Ferrari's first win in Monza since 2010 and took an emotional debut victory in Spa after the passing of longtime friend Antoine Hubert. However, during that same year, he had a huge opportunity to make history with the prancing horse by becoming the first Monogasque to win the Monaco Grand Prix. But just like in previous years, his ambitions of a race win ended prematurely in a DNF. The curious curse that has followed Leclerc at Monaco dates back all the way to his Formula 2 days in 2017. That weekend was the first time Charles drove a single-seater around the streets of Monaco, and he was on it from the very onset. Despite his lack of experience, he claimed the top spot in free practice with a 119.722, just over a tenth faster than Sergio Canamassas. So heading into qualifying, he was very much the favourite for pole. The session itself was split into two parts to avoid traffic, with odd-numbered cars running first and the even-numbered cars running second. Leclerc led Group A with a 119.309, which later became pole position after Alex Albon's pace-setting lap in Group B wasn't good enough to beat the Monegasque. As the lights went out, the pole sitter made a strong start, just about holding off Albon heading into saint -Devot. These two broke away into a race of their own as they traded fastest laps and built a big gap back to Oliver Rowland in P3. However, a retirement for Nicholas Latifi resulted in the safety car being brought out. Now, for the drivers who started on the super softs, it was a golden opportunity for them to make their mandatory pit stop, but the others were faced with a dilemma. They could either change onto the super softs early and try to get to the end of the race, or hold on to their original strategy and rely on building a large enough lead to pit later. Albon was the only driver in the top three to do the former as he emerged P7, promoting Roland to P2. Racing resumed on lap 12, but it didn't take long for there to be another incident. Louis Delatraz and Robert Vizio came together at Mirabeau, bringing out the safety car for a second time. And this is where Leclerc's race took a turn for the worse. He was called in just after the collision, but before the safety car was brought out. Crucially for his rivals, they pitted behind the safety car and ended up demoting the hometown favourites down to P4. Worse was yet to come for Leclerc as he was forced to come back into the pits due to an insecure tyre which eventually resulted in his retirement. After it all coming apart in the feature race, Leclerc was left to start the sprint race down in P17, from which he could do very little to salvage any points from the weekend. Unfortunately, he didn't even get to see the chequered flag at all as he retired again on lap 20, with an electrical failure. 2018 would see him make his Formula 1 debut. After a slow start in the opening few rounds, he found his feet pretty quickly. By race 4, he secured his best finish of the season with a P6 in Azerbaijan and then followed this up with another points finish in Barcelona. The momentum was starting to build rapidly heading into Monaco and the weekend itself was once again going quite well up until Sunday. In qualifying, he was able to get through into Q2 and stick his car in P14. The lights went out and Leclerc actually listened to his race engineer Jeff and didn't perform any heroics into Sander Vaux. Instead, he kept his nose out of trouble and tucked in behind the Toro Rosso of Brendan Hartley. 
So Rockin's breakthrough weekend came undone when he was given a 10 second stop go penalty for his wheel not being fitted at the three minute start signal. Consequently, Van Dorn, Leclerc, Hartley and Stroll all made up places before a hard charging Verstappen overtook them all in the Red Bull. Leclerc sat on Hartley's gearbox for pretty much the entire race. Well, at least until this happened. What is Leclerc's problem? And is Leclerc actually going to go for it here? And oh, he can't stop! And he has gone straight on into Brendan Hartley. And you can see that that was coming. With just eight laps to go in hot pursuit of the Kiwi, Charles stamped onto the brakes heading down into the Novel chicane and the left front brake disc completely shattered. He had absolutely nowhere to go and was a mere passenger in the collision. This was unfortunate, but not nearly as costly as the mistake his team made a year later. It's the 25th of May, 2019. Five rounds into his debut season at Ferrari, Shell was hungry to win the first Grand Prix of his career. A technical issue in Bahrain saw him lose the lead to the two Mercedes in what was a beautifully managed race up to that point for someone in just their second race with a new team. Then there was Baku, where the infamous I am stupid meme was born and Leclerc threw away a huge opportunity to take another pole position and best place himself to go for the win. However, after topping the final practice session on Saturday morning, Charles was the favourite for pole heading into the most important qualifying session of the year. For the first set of runs in Q1, the Monegasque set a banker lap of a 112 for 1.9, leaving him down in P7 with three and a half minutes remaining. So if you're Ferrari, you have one of two options. Number one is send him out again to guarantee a spot in the next round will take a massive risk by keeping him in the garage while the track is evolving and lap times are rapidly dropping. Take a wild guess as to which option they chose. His teammate Sebastian Vettel right at the last gasp goes quickest overall. It's success of a sort in one part of the Ferrari garage. It's despair in the other side. Yup, my guy is fuming. Starting from 16th on the grid, Leclerc is on a mission to get as high up the grid as possible in the shortest amount of time possible. For the opening few laps, he executed his plan to perfection. Bold move after bold move, the dude was putting on a show. But you could sense somewhat of a desperation in his approach. This became clearer on lap 9 as he went for a move on Nico Hülkenberg at Raskas, but clipped the inside of the barrier with his right rear tire. But instead of bringing the car back to the pits at the required pace, he raced to get back as quickly as possible, shredding the right side of the floor in sheer frustration and anger. Well, at least things couldn't get any worse. Get past Robert Kubica can get past Kubica and Leclerc are kind of stuck there. I'm done. Another year, another DNF in Monaco for Charles Leclerc. The start of the 2021 season for the Scuderia has been a massive step up from where they were a year ago. They are no longer lacking so much in the power unit department, their aero package has made significant gains, and their new driver lineup looks as strong as ever. In a year where development restrictions have been implemented due to the global pandemic, Ferrari have done an outstanding job in catapulting themselves back up the order and fighting for third in the constructors. Of course, it's not where they ultimately want to be, but all things considered, they deserve a lot of praise for their efforts. Going into round 5, they were expected to be amongst the fastest, given how well their car performed in the high downforce last sector in Barcelona. In fact, Lando Norris even went as far to say that his buddy Carlos Sainz had a shot at winning the race, such was the hype surrounding the SF21. All through the weekend, they displayed incredibly strong pace, but most were still under the impression that Mercedes and Red Bull were still the favourites. Until Leclerc stuck it on pole, albeit in dramatic fashion. A crash on the second set of Q3 runs not only ruined other drivers' laps, but it potentially could have ruined Leclerc's entire race weekend as the team feared they'd be forced to change the gearbox and suffer a 5th place grid penalty. However, they didn't find any issues with it and were happy to send him out on an installation lap. But as soon as the car hit the track, there was an issue. Initially reported as a gearbox related problem, Mattia Bonotto came out and stated that the failure was on the drive shaft into the hub on the left hand side. According to them, it wasn't a gearbox issue. In fact, it might not have even been related to the accident itself. But unlike in previous years, Charles couldn't even start the race. Such a peculiar sequence of events last weekend pretty much summarised what Leclerc has experienced time and again at his home Grand Prix. 
Nothing has ever gone his way in Monte Carlo for one reason or another. It would be an amazing redemption story to see it happen soon, but for now, we'll have to wait for at least another year. I hope you all enjoyed. Feel free to leave a comment below to give your take on Leclerc or the race in general. Remember to like the video if you enjoyed and subscribe to the channel with bell notifications to keep up to date with the latest videos in the future. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.